I'm back playing with the Wooden Boat Association dinghy that was built at Sydney Boat Show. So what I did last weekend is I fed in all these pieces and this was sticking out so I filled it then clamped it and got that looking good now. I fared this some more so it ties in and the bow looks a lot more fared. This was tucked right in and it looked ugly. So I've done that. I've uh, filled a few more low patches that I'd previously had a go at. I'm going to sand those off next. At present I've just been going around and hand sanding these areas, taking off the bits of epoxy and uh, rounding it off and cleaning up the joins ready to um, put some boat coat on it. And my aim today is to get the inside painted out with undercoat and then do these top sides, this area from here to here at the uh, gunnel strip. And I'll just do that with a boat coat to make it look nice and smart. So that's where I'm at today. Uh, interior today and tomorrow I'm hoping to roll it over and get the undercoat on the outside. I thought I was being clever when I put boat coat over the um, filled in areas you know, just to help fill some lumps and bumps I'd left but holy hell it makes it hard to sand so you're better off getting a smoother finish with the filler than doing what I did and throwing the boat coat over the top I thought it'd fill in some lumps and bumps God's made it hard to sand. Little tip for you, don't put boat coat over filler. Here's a little no-no when you're playing with electric leads. Don't leave them rolled up because what they do, they create a magnetic field and they get hot. And if you leave them on a reel, for example, they will actually melt. So be very careful leaving um, uh, electrical leads rolled up. Always just pull them out and uh, let them flop around. You won't have any problems in that case. Hey, I, I just learned a new tip, people. We we ended up with holes here because I didn't um, uh, clamp our boards down and the dinghy fell down and damaged it, cracked here. But what John did, he said, hey, I got a doicky that works for that. And just A4 laminated sheets of paper, we cut it in half and it's stiff enough and the epoxy won't stick to the plastic and we'll just hold it on with masking tape and that way it gives it a good contoured finish so we will be bugger all sanding there we'll have something that looks Mickey Mouse how's that? we put um, two coats of undercoat on late last night and it's still a little bit tacky so I think what I'll do because you can see patches of it I'm going to put a couple more coats on above the waterline area Below the waterline area it's sealed, I'm not worried about it, it can look a little bit ugly. But above the waterline, I want to tidy it up a bit more. When we put the undercoat on yesterday we used foam brushes, just two inch foam brushes, and uh, sp spread it out from there with the first coat. And what we did with the second coat is we got um, put it on with a roller, and uh, then went over it with a brush. Uh, and uh, it's come up pretty good for two coats. I think I'm going to take advantage of uh, it not being dry properly. Well, it's still tacky. And I'm going to put another one or two coats above the waterline area or above the floorboard area. Now that I've finished painting, I'm pulling the masking tape off. So I've pulled the tape off here and I'm now going around pulling all the tape off look how much neater it looks now that we've got the tape off and then what I'll do all these little white marks here I'll go around with a rag and metho and clean all those off because it makes it easy cleaning up uh, uh, later on before we uh, paint the seats or do the seats with boat coat clear I've uh, cleaned all the undercoat off all the vertical uh, off all the timber parts and they're, so they're ready to coat and all they need is sand so uh, I'm going to get in and coat the seats now and uh, make them look respectable. It's this easy to get rid of. Um, it's this easy to get rid of. See that white there? We just hit him with some metho, or you put the metho on the rag, and you give it a good wipe, and it's gone. We've um, got a bit in grain there. I might have to give that a little bit of a sand, or it'll show up. That's all there is to it. So I've cleaned around all the edges. That the top gunnel there needs a sand. We'll have to do it after because the undercoat's still wet. But um, 
on the seats we'll be able to get some boat coat on that and start getting them looking really smick see the blemish over there where I've um, epoxied and I had a couple here and I've seen them here you'll see um, how she disappears there's another one up here a right, little trick up our sleeve here where's our bit of sandpaper so I've got some Abronet sandpaper that's well used and I've ripped a bit off and so what we'll do now I'll do it from this side so you can see it disappear see how we got that blummy there All right, we'll just sand him in and we'll come back over with a bit of boat coat and you'll never know it was there we've got a couple here so a bit hard to see here I'm going to sand that in so it blends in cheating at its best All right. and uh, we'll put a bit of poke coat on and they're gone how's that for a trick eh? Brush, go over him, blend him in. Once it soaks in, you'll hardly tell it was ever there. So that's how you fix blend. Well, I've had a big day today. We've got the inside pretty well finished. Uh, did two coats or three coats of epoxy on the seats. So the first one's got TPRDA in it to help the um, epoxy drawing, the second one was straight and the third one I've added about 10% metho and it's allowed it to give it that nice gloss and level out a lot better than the boat coat on its own does the back seat I'd previously finished got the stern done so we've got three coats of undercoat inside it so it's looking respectable so it's uh, even got the stern looking pretty so on the stern I did uh, two coats of boat coat then let it cure and I sanded it down and I've just put a thin coat on um, with uh, metho in it and it's looking pretty good.